last video, we got this 5.3 Vortec LS block tore down. This came out of an O2 Silverado and it's going in a 1989 Blazer. During the teardown, I found some things that changed my build. I was originally only planning on doing a cam swap, freshening the gaskets. But as we tore this down, we pulled the cam out. Notoriously, these LS bearings for the cam were worn down to the copper. So that really changed my mindset. Decided I was going to pull the pistons out and we were going to do rod main bearings and inspect the cylinders. It would also give me the ability to clean this thing down without having to worry about getting stuff down in the, the bores and all around the crank and all that. So that's a positive. We're gonna get all new bearings in this thing. Um, and we're also gonna be able to clean it really well. However, during the inspection process, also found that two of these cylinders were pitted from either coolant or water, or uh, I don't know, maybe even mouse pee, I'm not sure, um, was laying in number six and number eight. The head gasket looked really good. The heads don't look like they're cracked. So I'm in a dilemma. All right, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do here. If I've gotta bore this thing out, take it to a machine shop, it's, you know, it's gonna cost another five, $600, um, you know, for the machine work and the pistons together. Uh, you know, I priced it out to just have it honed is, is maybe 250 um, with a pressure test and cleaning and then to actually have it bored, we're up in the 300 range to have, you know, all those things done, including cam bearings and, and a boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a three stone hone down through these bores and see if we can't clean it up. Now I want to use a three stone hone because that stone surface on each one of those three stones is a hard, flat, sort of a corrective surface versus a dingleberry hone, which those little balls are just going to, you know, flex around in there. That flat stone is really going to sand that smooth and hopefully show me where any low spots are and if we're really lucky we'll get out most of this pitting. So what I've been doing is I've spent the last few days figuring out how to use this micrometer which is a really cool tool. So I've been documenting what the diameter of all these bores are taking measurements throughout so that when I go to hone it with my three stone hone I'll have a before and after measurement. All right, so how this measurement process has been working for me is to use these snap gauges. I don't have a dial bore gauge, which would probably be better, but this is how I'm doing it. I'm just getting rough estimates. I mean, this isn't real precise tooling here anyways, so I'm just trying to see if it's wildly out and have a baseline before I hone it. So basically I rock this back and forth so that it tries to find center. And then it's a feel thing. Once it feels good, I tighten that down, gently pull that out, and then I come over to the mic, line it up, twist it. And then once it clicks, you can lock it. So this is a three inch, so you can see here, 3.7. And then each one of these is a quarter, so 3.775. And then you read this, which is going to be in between the four and five, so that's a four. And then the Vermeer scale, you just see which one of these lines up the best. And we're going to say that's a six. So then I'll come over here, 3.775. off the thimble, goes there, and then the six off the Vermeer, 3.7796. So I'm taking measurements this way and this way, and then I'm going into the middle and also down in the bottom and going both ways. So once I've got all my measurements written down, you know, the bore from production was 3.779 to 3.780. So I'm just kind of looking at my rough measurements, make sure that uh, everything is looking good on that. So to hone, after I've taken my measurements, I've got this, you know, three stone hone here. These are uh, mid-grade, mid-grit stones. 
So in here I've got some mineral spirits and trans fluid mixed together. We'll make sure the stones are wet. Soak down the inside. And then I'm just gonna go up and down to try to get this to clean up. And of course, the speed that you do it and how fast you go up and down is gonna determine which crosshatch looks like. Mineral spirits. Just kind of wash some of that grit out. So there you go. It doesn't take much if you don't have issues. So, I mean, I think that looks pretty good. I might hit it one more time for posterity, and I'll go ahead and do the rest of these and inspect them. All right, we're looking at the odd number cylinders, starting with number one. Cross hatching looks great. I really don't see any issues on this side. You know, there's a few little places where it's discolored, but not a problem. All right, now we're looking at the even bank here. So, not too bad. All of these look really pretty decent, except for six and eight. So after it was documented, I honed it, and I wore out a set of stones on number eight, and another set of stones on number six, trying to get that rust pitting out. So far, it's done a fairly decent job. You can still see the pitting This one's a lot better. The eight is better than six. You can see that right in there, that shadow. So I'm feeling better about it. I mean, you can feel the texture in there. Nothing that really catches a fingernail. Yeah, rotate it over, get a better look, different angle. Got some WD-40 in there, which kind of actually helps where it's not dry from the brake clean. Different type of light, too. I'll add that now that I've gone through those bores with uh, the mid-grade grit 320 or whatever, I do plan on doing a final hone with a 400 grit to lighten up the cross hatching a little bit. From what I've read, you know, the LS motors, that uh, the rings that typically go in those, they like a little bit of a finer grit for the cross hatching. So we'll tune everything up with a couple more passes with a finer grit and uh, hoping, hoping that that's all gonna be good to go. So now that the honing's done, each one of those cylinders have been honed and I really dug in on number six and number eight where the pitting was. I feel better about this, a lot better about this actually. So I used the 320 grit stones on that hone and uh, really went to town there. And I went back and actually measured every bore with my micrometer. And they're all within, you know, close spec of my original measurements. So I feel like, I think I'm all right. You know, I didn't like overboard it or over hone it or anything. So looking down in number six and number eight, you can see that it really smoothed out. I mean, you can hardly feel it when you run your hand down through there. So I still need to think about this a little bit, but I think I'm just going to send it. I mean, I could take it to the shop and have all that uh, machine work done, you know, have to end up, they're probably going to tell me it needs board. So I'm going to end up spending a bunch of money on pistons and you get into all of the, you know, the variations of what pistons you want and, you know, what does that do to your balance and this, that, and the other. So, I mean, this is just going to be a daily driver. I'm not looking at high horsepower here. Simple stage two cam swap. So I think I'm going to try it. It ran 
<laughs> it ran like that before without a click, tick, smoke, you know, no gray smoke, no oil in the coolant, you know, no black smoke. It didn't burn oil. Um, so it ran before, so it should run again. You know, I've been reading about this pitting and who knows, you know, what what's right and wrong. But, you know, my uh, thoughts are maybe that'll fill with some carbon oil, you know, and kind of smooth over to where we're not having a whole lot of blow by. So not only am I trying to keep the cost on this down, it's supposed to be a budget build for a daily type driver. Uh, but, but the other thing I'm really thinking about is like, what's the worst that could happen here? You know, like this engine building thing, there's a lot of paranoia and worry that goes into it, especially when like me, when you really haven't done it before. Um, so I've been thinking about it and, and really I understand that maybe I could re-ring this thing and the ring catches the, the groove in that pitting and, you know, shatters the piston and, you know, breaks the ring land and it goes into scatter mode and grenades the whole motor and, you know, that whole catastrophic scenario. I'm willing to accept that, uh, but I do kind of feel like it's a lower priority probability since it, it did run before okay. Um, so I feel like I put this back together. The worst that could really happen is I have reduced compression in those two cylinders or... Uh, I have a little bit of smoking, some oil, you know, some blow by, um, you know, I've read too where guys have had that and, uh, you know, after a thousand miles or so it clears up because it glazes over and carbons up and it's just fine. So, you know, worst case scenario, a little bit of smoking. If it absolutely drives me nuts, I pull it back out. I pull everything apart. My bearings should all be good. My cam will certainly be good. You know, I'll probably be out a few dollars for some gaskets. And then I'm right back to where, you know, kind of I'm at now where it'll just go to a machine shop and get all that work done, um, you know, board out new pistons and everything. So, you know, if it does go, I'm just out some time and some money for some gaskets. Stick around for this build. Let's see where this goes. Thanks for sticking around and catch me next time.